To Calm the Pig Inside is a short film in the aftermath of Super Typhoon Haiyan, locally known as Yolanda, which wreaked havoc in the Philippines, causing thousands of deaths and leaving over 4 million homeless. I was less interested in the facts, but more interested in exploring how people cope with the tragedy and trauma. Three weeks before the typhoon made landfall, a neighboring island was reeling from a massive earthquake which destroyed almost all of the historical churches and also left many homeless. Upon hearing of all of the politicking taking place with the relief goods being handed out or withheld, I was moved to volunteer with a group of new friends who wanted to bypass government channels and provide relief to the victims directly. The day after the super typhoon made landfall, I flew to France to pitch a film, and it was through the news there where I first saw images of the devastation, especially in Tacloban where a storm surge killed thousands of people. I recall being livid when I saw our president inexplicably downplaying the death toll. This was in stark contrast with the solidarity I felt from the world, and I was grateful to see the support France was giving, for example. Although I was in Paris for the month, I was coordinating with friends every day, including the group I had volunteered with after the earthquake, as our island was also affected and Tacloban was a neighboring island. It was by chance at a cocktail party that I met a French producer who was doing a 3D film on hurricanes around the world who was looking for a local producer to help them film the aftermath of Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines, not only in Tacloban, but in other towns affected in the region as well. As soon as I got back to the Philippines, I went and visited all of the devastated areas, coordinating with various contacts on finding places to stay and how to move between the affected towns and islands. It was at this time locals started approaching me, telling me their different traumatic stories. In Tacloban, I was wondering why there seemed to be only meat for sale, for instance, and people told me they were afraid to eat the fish as so many people perished during the storm surge and many bodies were still out at sea. When the French team finally arrived, Whilst they filmed the destruction wreaked on nature and on buildings, locals would come up to me and tell me their stories. One lady asked me to help her children who would cry at the slightest sound of rain or wind. I would eventually join the team in chasing other storms in the Philippines, which gave me more insight into the terrifying sounds during a storm. During my time in Tacloban, I had heard of the many orphans left behind by the storm, so I decided to start a long-term scholarship program called Escuela Haiyan, which we wrapped up just last year. We eventually supported around 40 students, both in Tacloban as well as the coastal town of Giwan. This allowed me to spend more time with the students and teachers as I traveled to the affected areas, sometimes twice a year. This allowed me to listen to more stories of their experience during the typhoon from the students and teachers alike. By then, I finally decided to make a film on Typhoon Yolanda. A writer friend asked me why I wanted to make this film and what was my experience. He convinced me that the film should be told from my point of view and this is when I decided to make an essay film, a form I love with Chris Marcus' Sans Soleil being one of my absolute favorite films. In Sans Soleil, it opens and talks about the image of happiness, three children the director saw in Iceland. With such a traumatic topic, I was inspired to also open my film with one of the few scenes of joy.
The live typhoon footage from my film are from storm chasers who were in Tacloban when the typhoon made landfall and who I met through the French film and hurricanes. It was so intense that one of them got hurt and had to be airlifted out of Tacloban. Many of the photographs in the film are by Vijay Villafranca, who mostly shoots in black and white, and we then decided to make the film entirely in black and white. Vijay was already doing a series on climate change and extensively covered the storm. At the last minute, I changed my mind and decided to keep the section with the children's illustrations in color. The sound design in this section also intensifies the sounds of the wind and typhoon, as the storm seems so vivid when the children describe their experience. The title of the film refers back to my time volunteering after the earthquake, where people of that town would yell, Bua! Bua! as they believed it would calm the agitated pig living inside the earth, which was causing the tremors. Since the film premiered in 2020, the film has traveled in festivals around the world, and the film seems to have resonated, perhaps in part because of the pandemic, but most likely because of the personal stories that were shared. Here's hoping you'll have the chance to watch the film through the World Press photo site. Thank you.